Thank you, Irene. It isn't often that uh, a retired faculty member has a chance to introduce uh, one of his prized pupils, but uh, that pleasant task was just given to me by Irene uh, Hirano Inoue. And I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker today, Governor uh, Yuzaki from the uh, prefecture of Hiroshima. Uh, Governor Yuzaki is my idea of the new type of politician that Japan needs. Um, someone who is smart, someone who's energetic, someone who is farsighted, someone who has been a business person, a government official, an entrepreneur. All of those things he's been. Um, he uh, graduated from the University of Tokyo and entered the ministry at that time called MIDI, Ministry of In uh, International Trade and Industry. And um, he came to Stanford University to the business school where he graduated um, uh, with his MBA. He took my seminar at that time um, and um, I was always impressed by his, uh, his intelligence and his curiosity. I never expected him to become a politician um, <laughs> I thought he was more intelligent than that, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, he has uh, broken the stereotypes and uh, he became an entrepreneur after being a government official, a successful founder of a company called ACA, and which provides access to broadband and um, ISP. And he was extremely successful in that domain and then surprised us all by running for governor and being successful. I think that the hope of Japan in many ways rests with young political leaders like Governor Yuzaki, and I'm delighted uh, to introduce him now. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Okimoto. I, I was uh, uh, probably not good enough. <laughs> and chose to run for, uh, for governor. And uh, I, before I uh, start, of course, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the U.S.-Japan Council and the uh, japan American Society of Hawaii, and of course, uh, uh, Ms. Irene Hirano uh, Inoue and Professor Dan Okimoto, and uh, also Senator uh, Dan Inoue for uh, letting me have uh, this opportunity to address. It's, it's uh, really a great uh, an honor for me to speak uh, as a keynote speaker about uh, uh, US, uh, uh, about US-Japan economic issues. And a little bit uh, elaboration on my introduction, uh, you know, uh, uh, Professor Okimoto uh, already uh, uh, introduced me about my uh, career and uh, my sc uh, school association with Stanford. But uh, I am uh, personally and professionally very uh, deeply involved with the uh, U.S. Uh, my first experience uh, was as a high school exchange student in California. And I lived for uh, one year and went to a public high school. And then, uh, of course, I graduated from Stanford and, uh, and I also took a professor's uh, seminar. And, and at the MEDI, uh, currently M-E-T-I -E MEDI, um, where I started my career, uh, I dealt with uh, many U.S. issues like uh, when uh, President Bush came to uh, Japan with the big three uh, companies, uh, you know, back in 1993, uh, I was at the automobile division helping this uh, issue. And I was uh, at nuclear industry division when the Korean uh, Peninsula crisis uh, happened in, 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 in Japan uh, and, and in, in uh, East Asia. Uh, and, and also, I was... Uh, at America's division. Today we have the director, Mr. Akahoshi, yeah, there. <laughs> uh, I was at America's division 
and uh, uh, was a deputy director for U.S. affairs. So I was uh, basically dealing with all the U.S. economic and trade issues uh, in uh, 1997 or so. And at Alka Networks, uh, the, the business that I started, uh, the largest uh, and first and the largest uh, shareholder uh, was uh, Covad, which uh, was a Californian uh, DSL company. Uh, so I mean, you know, really personally and and, and professionally, uh, uh, have had very close relationship with the U.S. And now. Um, I'd like to go into my presentation. Uh, currently, Japan is uh, uh, undergoing a major structural changes, as you are aware, uh, with saturation of growth and uh, aging, declining population, and and being the forefront of development uh, is forcing Japanese society to change uh, slowly but drastically. Uh, the changing global environment, uh, including emerging Asian and uh, new and other new economic powers, uh, is also putting pressure on Japan to change. Well, starting uh, in Meiji period, uh, a centralized economic and political system was the most effective way of raising the living standards in Japan. Uh, and therefore, much authority has uh, concentrated at the national government level. However, um, as Japan achieved a very high level of economic and social development, the, the so-called the catch-up strategy uh, uh, is, has been uh, no longer valid, and it's not valid for uh, almost 20, 25 years now, I think. The centralized system was very efficient when uh, the goal or targets were relatively clear. But now Japan needs to create its own goal, I think. And socially, and economically, and technologically, Japan is now the front, one of the front runner of the world. And what Japan needs to aim at is no longer obvious. But Japan needs to find its own goal on its uh, own way. And, and there we need more diverse system. And the one key is to decentralize political and economic system and create a competitive environment in policy making. Well, Japan so far uh, has been uh, developing uh, in Tokyo Osaka, those major cities, and create wealth and redistribute that to regions. That was the basic uh, policy uh, which came with this uh, centralized system. But it's no longer uh, economically valid with the huge deficit in the central government and uh, the creation of wealth in those uh, uh, centered area are not sufficient either. So we, we, that's why we need a new system. And, and, and one way is this decentralization. And by decentralization, the regional policy making uh, bodies in the economic system uh, will compete against each other. Each regional government uh, trying to excel other regions. And each region will try to exploit their respective uh, strengths and, and pursue initiatives led by local businesses, including SMEs, that take up new challenges. And creating a unique region centered on the concentration of industry, uh, intellectual assets, and intellectual clusters can lead to the creation of innovations uh, through competition and collaboration uh, which then energizes the entire Japan. A collaboration between regional industrial clusters and outstanding uh, industrial clusters from overseas also has the potential to generate uh, world-class innovation. 
And at this point, let me uh, touch upon a little bit what we have in Hiroshima. When in Hiroshima, we have very strong uh, uh, industries like uh, shipbuilding. Uh, steel mills in Hiroshima are the most productive ones globally. The automobile industry, uh, represented by Mazda, has one of the most advanced, advanced and sophisticated manufacturing processes, even in Japan. And cutting-edge electronics and electro, uh, electrical machinery companies added, we have very strong manufacturing industries. And Mazda's uh, rotary engine, the hydrogen vehicle, and sharps, uh, cell phones, and LEDs, in LP, the memories, a DRAM, and Disco's uh, corporation's micron cut, and it's an uh, ultra thin uh, resinoid cutting wheel. Uh, it's a very technical term. <laughs> but uh, we're all developed in Hiroshima, and those companies are, you know, the world level, and uh, some of them you know, some, some you may not be aware, but have very strong share in the world. And in fact, we're also home to many uh, world-class SMEs in many industries. Um, our companies are at the top with uh, cutting-edge skills and technology that stand up not only in Japan, but also in the world. And thanks to those companies that support our prefecture and the regional economy, uh, the total amount of uh, product shipment of Hiroshima was approximately uh, 7.8 trillion Japanese yen. Uh, it's about 834 billion US dollars in 2009, which was number one in Chugoku, uh, Shikoku, and Kyushu altogether, and number 10 uh, in, in number 10th uh, prefecture in all over Japan. So Hiroshima uh, Prefecture is uh, known as a prefecture of uh, monozukuri, or uh, industrial engineering and manufacturing. And we have uh, well organized, and we also have well organized and concentrated research system that supports our high tech industries. Uh, Hiroshima Science Park, and National Institute of Advanced uh, Industrial Science and Technologies, uh, the Center of Advancement uh, of Car Electronics and, of course, Hiroshima University are examples of public research institutes. And those institutions work to, uh, together with the private companies R&D departments. So we have a strong uh, industrial base uh, and, uh, and R&D uh, capabilities in Hiroshima. And in Hiroshima Prefecture, as the population declines, uh, we have we need uh, uh, to reinvigorate uh, our industry, we create a new industry uh, to go forward uh, to increase our wealth. And uh, we have recently uh, <clears throat> uh, formed up a plan. Uh, for uh, uh, 10 years term to do that and uh, and the, the slide shows the, this uh, strategy and the objective is of course to cultivate new industries through innovation and also enhance the mid and long term competitive competitive competitiveness of uh, uh, core industries that we already have. And uh, one, uh, uh, there are some initiatives here. Uh, it says that in the blue line, the Hiroshima Prefecture's industry innovation structure, but it, it's actually industry innovation organization that's kind of a uh, translation mistake. But uh, we're going to set up uh, this organization uh, and this is uh, virtually a uh, fund uh, with uh, public and private money together uh, to uh, invest in uh, growth companies uh, and, and not only provide the funds 
financial resources that the growth company would need, but also uh, uh, hands-on um, assistances in marketing and sales and in all other uh, managerial area. And also we're, uh, this is, becomes a little uh, subtle topic, but uh, in, in terms of WTO, but we're trying to, uh, we're going to uh, target certain industries uh, uh, to uh, create the new clusters like uh, new energy or uh, uh, medical equipment, which uh, we can draw, us, uh, we can uh, base, uh, we can use our, our strength of uh, uh, manufacturing and apply to uh, to those new industries. And this uh, this slide uh, uh, explains the, this uh, uh, industry uh, innovation organization. This uh, you know, the, at the growth, uh, in the growth uh, trajectory, uh, we, we have certain time period where the, the, the resources are uh, short. So that, uh, this, is, uh, this organization is to, to cover that part from between the venture and the public uh, IPO. And uh, well, this is to conclude. And until uh, recently, the Japan-U.S. economic cooperation has gone mainly through uh, the central governments. Today, we have a lot of representatives from uh, Meri and uh, Mofa uh, who are in the central government. But uh, the real strength of Japan owes in large part in SMEs uh, located in regions. And I would say the technology and technologies and the resources in those local companies are untapped uh, sources of new innovation and, and competitiveness. And some companies have already leveraged the, uh, the resources in regional SME, SMEs. And one famous example uh, was Apple, uh, which uh, used middle Finnish technologies of SMEs, SMEs in Japan uh, for its uh, original iPod, the first iPod. Uh, you remember the mirror uh, back, uh, stainless back, was all finished basically in Japan uh, using SMEs. And so um, Japan-US relationship has been mainly central to central relationship. Uh, but now new regional relationship will open up uh, new and very promising op opportunities. And I will not say new op opportunities will be captured with no effort. Uh, SMEs are less organized and, and good and useful technologies are, and business models are, are, are hard to find. They are kind of varied uh, among uh, many ordinaries. So we, we need to uh, put a lot of efforts to, to find them. Uh, but I think it's worth uh, pursuing. And I believe such efforts will really define the new competitive, competitiveness that we need uh, facing uh, challenges of the new world. And uh, central government-led support measures uh, tends to uh, lean towards large companies and excellent SMEs tend to be overlooked. Uh, in Hiroshima Prefecture and other regions, there are many outstanding SMEs, and regional governments that are aware of such companies uh, must take the lead to provide support to SME and move ahead with exchange ex activities with uh, US regional governments. And and industrial uh, 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 partners. And by doing so, I'm sure that uh, uh, this will encourage the creation of, of new innovations 
and lead to an even stronger uh, relationship between the U.S. and Japan. So that concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I, I, I need to mention that, uh, of course, uh, uh, a lot of exchanges has been uh, between U.S. Uh, regions and Jap uh, Japanese regions, like uh, state of Hawaii and prefecture of Hiroshima are in sister relationship, and we have uh, had wonderful relationship for a long time. So thank you very much. <laughs>